change your heart, change your life, change the planet. Good morning, everyone. I'm starting my day off with a very dark green smoothie. It's got a lot of blueberries in there today. Just felt like blueberries. And I even put three bananas in there. I know, right? <laughs> Crazy! <laughs> anyway, what's in your smoothie this morning? You are having a smoothie, aren't you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, today I want to talk about a movie that I just saw with my dad called Unbroken. Uh, it's a book that he read, and he approached me. He's like, hey, they just made a movie about this book that I read, and it's really this amazing story about this guy that survives a prison of war camp in Japan, and he's lost at sea in a raft for however many days. And I'm like, hmm, that sounds kind of familiar to me. So I looked up the movie, and it's about Louis Zamperini. And if you've seen the movie, yeah, of course, it's about Louis Zamperini. He survived in a raft, and he was in a prisoner of war camp, and yada, yada. He was going to be an Olympic medalist, but the Olympics were canceled. All right, anyway. Uh, I worked with Louis in Los Angeles back in 2005. We did an event together for um, Troubled Youth in L.A. And he came out, and he brought the Olympic torch with him. And uh, really, really neat guy, fascinating. And he told me his story then when we were hanging out for the day and doing stuff. So when I saw that it was about Louis, I'm like, oh my God, yeah, we got to go see this movie. And, you know, meeting a guy in his 90s and hearing him tell stories is very different than seeing somebody in their youth uh, when they actually are doing the things that make them uh, famous or build their character for the rest of their life. So it was really neat to see uh, what he went through, at least through the eyes of Angelina Jolie um, and the writer uh, who wrote the book. But I want to talk about this concept of being unbroken. He is an extraordinary man, and it is worth celebrating you know, what he did and who he was. But at the same time, I think it can be problematic because a lot of people compare themselves to that. Like, Louis set the bar really high for the rest of us. One of the best runners in the world at that time. Uh, just unbreakable courage and persistence and determination and belief in himself and what he could do and what he could endure and what he stood for. And that's admirable. That's exciting. It's like, wow, that's a hero. But how many of us go through our lives like that, being unbroken? Uh, you know, we get stuck in traffic and we break. <laughs> we run out of blueberries and we break. You know? And there's so many things that can trigger us and trip us up. And we see a movie like that and we're like, Wow, God, I'm lame. I'm really lame because I'm, I'm broken. Things break me. Things hurt me. Things affect me. Things stop me. Things knock me down. And if you look at what can break a person... There are external obstacles and there are internal obstacles. Like Louis had to survive in a raft in the ocean with sharks and no food. And he had to survive a prisoner of war camp where beatings were taking place and shooting and I'm sure beheadings and everything else. He had to survive external obstacles. And he did. And he did them very well. Survived them very well. But many of us have internal obstacles that aren't so obvious that you can compare yourself to someone like that and say, well, what have I been through? You know, I've never been in a prisoner of war camp. I've never been lost at sea. Um, you know, I've had a pretty comfortable life. I'm a white man in America. What are my challenges? What are my obstacles? And this is something that people always say about me personally and probably about many of you that you really have nothing to complain about. Seriously, look at what other people have to deal with. And that's it right there. Look at what other people have to deal with. The external obstacles are easy to see. We can look at them. But the internal obstacles are not so easy to see. Nobody else can see them. Nobody else can see what you're dealing with here. And most of the time, we can't even see what we're dealing with here. Our brain is set up to keep the mind largely unaware of what's going on. Like there's the brain and then there's the mind, our consciousness. All right? And the brain creates the mind, creates our consciousness, and feeds it, tells it what to think, creates certain feelings that stimulate certain types of thoughts. 
and the mind thinks it's in control and thinks it's aware and thinks that this is my world and I'm interacting with it, but really the brain is calling the shots. And it doesn't give the mind all of the information. It keeps it mostly in the dark. And when you start to realize this and you learn about it in psychology and neuroscience and physiology, it's really frightening at first because you feel like you're not really in control of your own life anymore. And who am I? Am I just this thing that my brain is doing? You know, is my brain just playing a game and I think it's me? <laughs> but the more I've looked at that and the more I've thought about it and read, um, you know, philosophical texts on this and religious texts on this, the more I come to realize that uh, that knowledge is actually really empowering because it allows you to get an awareness of the obstacles that really do exist up here in your brain and in your mind. And once you can create some space, once you can step back and say, oh, that's just something my brain is doing. There's a region in my brain that's making that happen right now. My anterior cingulate cortex is activated and that's causing me to feel anxious. Okay, all right, I can be aware of that. I can observe that. I can create some space between it. Instead of thinking, oh my God, the world is ending. This terrible thing has happened. I need to panic. I need to react. I need to yell at somebody. I need to hit somebody. I need to run from somebody. I need to make rash decisions. No. My ACC is activated, and it's sending a flood of chemicals through my body to make my heart tense, to make my stomach turn, to fill my legs with blood and get them ready for action. Right? It's like there's a, just a thing going on right now. Okay, fine, whatever. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to yell at anybody. I just realize, oh, it's doing its thing. But most people don't yet realize that's what's going on in their head, that the brain is just doing all these little things and your mind is essentially a puppet. And we've got massive obstacles that take place inside of us. Huge mountains that the brain throws in front of us, trying to save us, trying to protect us, trying to keep our genes alive and in the gene pool so we can procreate or concreate. Is there a concreate? <laughs> Sounds like concrete. Uh, anyway, um, so thinking about that movie, you know, most of the obstacles that I've had in my life are in here. Some of them are genetic. I was born with a certain type of brain. There are different brains. Just like there are tall people and there are short people, there is brown hair and blonde hair and blue eyes and dark eyes. There are different types of brains as well. My brain is prone to certain types of behaviors, certain types of thoughts, and a certain temperament. Hello, I got an email. <laughs> you can't change your temperament. You're born with it. It's genetic. Then there are the epigenetic influences, what my mom ate and did and thought before my pregnancy, during my pregnancy, and slightly after as I was being breastfed huge effect on my chromosomes and therefore my epigenetic expression, my phenotype. Your genes are your genotype. The epigenetic expression of those genes is your phenotype. Okay, you can have a gene for something, but it may not be active. Phenotype as opposed to genotype. Got it? Okay, good. And then there's uh, my experiences, things that have happened to me. So I was born with a certain type of brain, and then the brain was modified through my mother's behavior and thoughts. And my mom is really anxious. She worries a lot. So my body, as I was forming in her womb, was forming to respond to a world that was really threatening. Because the chemicals that she was producing were those of threat. And they got into my body. So I was born into a world with my brain believing everything is dangerous. Um, <clears throat> mothers that are really calm really relaxed, really happy, feel safe in the world. Their babies are born with a brain that says, okay, the world's a safe place. I can play. I can have fun. I can explore. That's not the way it happened for me. And then bad things have happened to me. And because my brain was already set up a certain way, when those bad things do happen, I immediately go to the dark side. Whereas a baby born with different genetics and therefore different temperament and different epigenetics, the mom was happy and nurturing, bad thing happens to that baby and baby's like you know okay that was bad but I'm good it's over moving on next so my journey through most of my life has been dealing with a brain that 
wants to kill me most of the time. And finding space, finding peace in the midst of that, this is a battle. You know, there is a constant battle that has been going on up there since I was a child. And most of my life has been excruciatingly painful in here. Maybe not out there, but in here it's a war zone. And, you know, I'm not saying someone should make a movie about me, but this is really a video about you that we can look at somebody that's accomplished great things and survived these really tremendous challenges externally and think, wow, you know, they're amazing and I suck because I can't do anything. Well, maybe you've got challenges that are just as dangerous, just as damning, just as frightening, and just as lethal going on in your own mind, in your own brain. And that the fact that you are still here is to be celebrated. And the fact that you're watching these videos because my videos are about facing your truth and dealing with your challenges and owning up to what's really going on and being vulnerable. And that scares people. My subscribers are going Woo, way down. People flee from my channel the more I talk about vulnerability. But that's how you get through stuff. That's how you grow. Growth is not easy. Anybody that promises easy growth is selling you something. Um, so you're here watching this, which means you want to change and you're willing to take a look. And I congratulate you for that and I celebrate you for that. So here's to all of you that are still kicking and you're unbroken on the inside. All right? I love y'all. See ya. Thank you.